All right, so this is problem 2.3 out of Griffith's Electrodynamics. And in this problem, we're trying to find the electric field a distance z above one end of a straight line segment that has uniformed charged density lambda. Okay, so to begin with, I'll draw over here a little bit. The distance from any point on this line to the point P is going to be just the square root of Z squared plus, that's an ugly squared. Can I fix that? Text mode is so frustrating sometimes. I never use it z squared plus x squared, where x is just where you are on that line. And we'll just call this angle here theta. And our electric field will look something like this. Okay? So we're going to have an electric field in the x direction and an electric field in the z direction. Now we'll start with the z direction. Ez is going to be 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. The integral lambda over r squared, so just z squared plus x squared. And now we're going to multiply by, so if we just want the z component, we'll multiply by sine theta. And we're going to integrate over that line segment dx from 0 to L. So the lambda can come out, that's just a constant. And sine of theta... Just using right triangle trig here. Sine of theta is going to be the opposite over the hypotenuse. Or z over the hypotenuse z squared plus x squared. So we can substitute that in. So we're going to have the integral from 0 to L. z squared plus x squared to the three halves and then we'll have another z here dx and now we can integrate this so the z is a constant we can factor that out no problem um, but this will require a trig substitution, so you could, I might not do all of this, but if you were curious how it would go about, you could do a substitution, we'll call it x equals, I believe this one is tangent of u, so u equals tangent inverse of x over z. And then you can differentiate both sides to find dx is z sequent squared of u du. And now you could substitute this in if you wanted to to get your z there. You would have z sequent, sequent squared u all divided by z squared tangent squared u so this is just a normal trig substitution integral so 3 halves du you could factor out that z and it becomes a much simpler integral um, but long story short if you want to work that out you can what you should get is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught 
times 1 over z times L over z squared plus L squared square root in the z hat direction. You could probably look up one of these integrals or do what you would like. Uh, it's doable, it just takes an extra few minutes if that's what you want to do. And then there's also going to be a component in the x direction. So we need to find that part. So lambda over 4 pi epsilon naught. Again, the integral from 0 to L. 1 over z squared plus x squared. This time, if we look, we're going to take the cosine um, to get the x component. And cosine of theta is going to be x over z squared plus x squared. So we're multiplying by that cosine part just to get the x part. So let's multiply by x over x squared plus z squared, sure. And of course, dx. And this will be in the x hat direction. Okay. So this is lambda over 4 pi epsilon naught, the integral from 0 to L. And we have z squared plus x squared to the 3 halves x dx. And this is in the x hat direction. This one's actually a lot simpler to solve. It's just through a u substitution where u is x squared plus z squared and du then is just going to be 2x times dx or 1 half du equals x dx. So that x in the numerator actually kind of makes our lives a little easier if you want to actually work this out by hand. So we have our constants out front x hat times 1 half coming from the du the integral of u to the minus 3 halves du. Okay. Um, so you add to that, you'll get a minus 1 half, so minus lambda over 4 pi epsilon naught x hat direction. That 2 will cancel with the 1 half, and you'll get u to the minus 1 half. And we're going to back substitute, so minus lambda x hat over 4 pi epsilon naught times 1 over z squared plus x squared. And we evaluate this from 0 to L. So then that will be minus lambda over 4 pi epsilon naught. Obviously if we just plug in the L squared there, nothing too crazy. And then if you plug in the zero, it'll just be square root of z squared or 1 minus c. And again in the x hat direction. So your total electric field will just be a sum of your x component plus your z component, which we found, we found those out. So hopefully that makes sense. If it did, please like and subscribe, and I'll post more videos.